This is from the Sandman's Hour, a book by Abby Phillips Walker. Stories for Bedtime The Good Sea Monster On an island of rocks, out in the ocean, lived a sea monster. His head was large, and when he opened his mouth it looked like a cave. It had been said that he was so huge that he could swallow a ship, and that on stormy nights he sat on the rocks and the flashing of his eyes could be seen for miles around. Sailors spoke of him with fear and trembling, but as you can see, the sea monster had really been a friend to them, showing them the rock in the storm by flashing his eyes. But because he looked so hideous, all who beheld him thought he must be a cruel monster. One night there was a terrible storm, and the monster went out into the ocean to see if any ship was wrecked in the night, and if possible, help anyone that was floating about. He found one little boy floating about on a plank. His name was Coco. And when he saw the monster, he was afraid. But when Coco saw that the monster didn't attempt to harm him, he climbed on the monster's back and he took him to the rocky island. Then the monster went back into the sea and Coco wondered if he were to be left alone. But after a while, the monster returned and opened his mouth very wide. Coco ran when he saw the huge mouth, for he thought the monster intended to swallow him. But as he didn't follow him, Coco went back. The monster opened his mouth again, and Coco asked, Do you want me to go inside? And the monster nodded his head. It must be for my own good, said Coco, for he could easily swallow me if he wished, without waiting for me to walk in. So Coco walked into the big mouth and down a dark passage. But what the monster wanted him to do, he could not think. <coughs> he could see very faintly now, and after a while he saw a stove, a chair and a table. I will take these out, said Coco, for I am sure I can use them. He took them to the cave on the island. He took them to a cave in, on the island, and when he returned, the monster was gone. But he soon returned, and again he opened his mouth. Coco walked in this time without waiting, and he found boxes and barrels of food, which he stored away in the cave. When Coco had removed everything, the monster lay down. When Coco had removed everything the monster had brought him, he lay down and went to sleep. Coco cooked his dinner, and then he awoke the monster and said, Dinner is ready, but the monster shook its head and plunged into the ocean. He soon returned with his mouth full of fish and plunged then Coco knew that the monster had brought all the things from the sunken ship for him, and he began to wish that the monster could talk, for he no longer feared him. I wish you could talk, he said. I can, the monster replied. No one ever wished it before. An old witch changed me into a monster and put me on this island, where no one could reach me. And the only way I can be restored to my original form is for someone to wish it. I wish it, said Coco. You have had your wish, said the monster, and I can talk, but for me to become a man, someone else must wish it. The monster and Coco lived for a long time on the island. He took Coco for long rides on his back, and when the waves were too high and Coco was afraid, the monster would open his mouth and Coco would crawl inside and he brought back safe and be brought back safe to the island. I'm sorry, the letters are very small. 
sometimes it's a bit hard to see. One night after a storm, Coco saw something floating on the water and he jumped on the monster's back and they swam out to it. It proved to be a little girl, about Coco's age, who had been on one of the wrecked vessels and they brought her to the island. At first she was afraid of the monster, but when she learned <coughs> that he had saved Coco as well as her and brought them all their food, she became as fond of him as Coco was. I wish he were a man, she said one day. <coughs> As she sat on his back with Coco ready for a sail. Splash went both children into the water and there in place of the monster was an old man. <coughs> <coughs> he caught the children in his arms and brought them to the shore. But what, will we, but, but what will we do for food now that you are a man? asked Coco. We shall want for nothing now, replied the old man. I am a sea god and can do many things now that I have my own form again. We will change this island into a beautiful garden and when the little girl and you are grown up and married, you shall have a castle and all the sea gods and nymph will care for you. You will never want for anything again. I will take you out on the ocean on the backs of my dolphins. Coco and the little girl lived on the enchanted island and all the things that the old sea god promised came through. Mother Turkey and her chicks Mother Turkey believed in the old adage taught to her by her grandmother, the early bird catches the worm. And every night when the sun set, she took her little chicks to the highest branch they could reach in an old apple tree and sang them to sleep with this lullaby. Close your eyes, my little turkey chicks. Hide your heads, don't peep. Mother knows the wogey fox has tricks and she'll well watch while you sleep. Mother turkey had told them about the wogey bo fox that lived in a hole on the other side of the hill and it did not need more than the mention of that name to make them obey. I do wish we could get just a look at him, said one chick as his mother came to the end of the verse. I should not know him if I met him. Oh yes, you would, replied his mother. He has a very long tail and a sharp nose and his teeth. Oh dear me, she exclaimed as she flapped her wings at the thought of them. Will you wake us if he comes tonight? asked another chick. I shall not need to do that, replied Mother Turkey. You will hear us talking. He's a very sly fellow and always very polite and says nice things. But you cover your heads, it is getting late. She began to sing again. Close your eyes, my little turkey chicks. Hide your heads, don't peep. Mother knows the bogey fox's tricks and she'll watch while you sleep. By the time Mother Turkey reached the end of the furs, this time all the chicks were fast asleep. Mother Turkey stretched out her wings once or twice and turned her head in all directions. And then she settled herself for a nap. The moon was shining brightly when she awoke and she saw not far off what looked like a large black dog walking cautiously towards the tree. Mother Turkey took another look and saw the bushy tail and she perched herself more firmly on the limb and looked to see if her children were safe on there too, for she knew that the bogey fox had come to take one of her chicks back to his hole if he could. Good evening, Mr. Fox, she said, as the fox came near enough to hear her. I was sure that I knew your splendid figure. You certainly make a most remarkable picture in the moonlight. <laughs> Mr. Fox was somewhat taken aback at his compliment, paid him in such a pleasant manner, 
for usually he was the one to make remarks, and the turkeys listened, not daring to move or speak. He recovered from his surprise by the time he was under the tree and said, You are most flattering, Mr. Mistress Turkey, and I can only return the compliment by telling you that you are a picture yourself in the moonlight, sitting so stately on that limb. But if you would enjoy to the full extent this beautiful evening, you must come from the tree and take a walk over the hill. No doubt you are right, replied Mrs. Turkey. But I could not think of leaving my children alone. I should be very glad to take care of the little dears while you are gone, said Mr. Fox. And if you will have them come down beside me, I will tell them a story, which I am sure will keep them interested until you return. By this time, the turkey chicks were awake and listening to what the fox was saying. He seemed so nice and polite that they quite forgot to be afraid. And when he spoke of telling them a story, one of them said, Oh, please do go, Mum, and let him tell a story. We'll be very good if you will. You see, my dear madam, said the fox, the little dears are quite willing to stay with me. Do go and enjoy the moonlight. Mother Turkey looked at her children in a way that plainly said to them, Be quiet. And then she said to Mr. Fox, I appreciate your kind offer, and were my children well, well should, should be, and were my children well, they should be very glad to leave them. I should be very glad to leave them with you, but they have been sick and are so lean that I have to be very careful that they sleep and eat well, or they will not be fed by next Thanksgiving, and that would be a disgrace, you know. When the fox heard this, he was not so anxious to have the chicks come down. So he said, I know just how anxious you must feel, Mistress Turkey. And if you will come down where I can talk with you without being heard, I will tell you the very thing to give them to make them fat. If he cannot get the chicks, he will take me, thought Mrs. Turkey. But I am too old a bird to be caught even by this sly fellow. Mrs. Turkey didn't reply to this last remark. She was thinking of a trap. She saw her master set the day before. I wish you would walk around a little so my children can see what a beautiful bushy tail you have, she said. They have never seen so handsome a fellow as you are. Mr. Fox was very proud of his tail, so he walked out from the shade of the tree and strutted about. Tell him how handsome he is whispered Mother Turkey to her chicks. Oh, isn't he handsome, said one, and another said, I wish we had such bushy tails instead of these straight feathers. Well, Mrs. Turkey said, you are quite the handsomest creature I've ever seen, and I've seen many in my time. By this time, the fox was so pleased with their admiration that he was ready to do anything to display his charms. <laughs> So, so when Mrs. Turkey said, I wish you would run and show them how you can run and jump, he asked what he could. He asked what he could jump onto show his, to show his nimbleness. The top of that hog head would be a good place, said Mrs. Turkey, knowing well that, he, that the task had no head, that the cask had no head and that it was nearly full of water. Away ran Mr. Fox, and splash he went into the hog's head. He tried to get out, but it was no use. The cask was too high, and then the farmer, hearing the noise, came out and soon put an end to Mr. Fox. The little turkeys sat wide awake and trembling beside their mother. But when the farmer went into the house, she began to sing. Close your eyes, my little turkey chicks. Hide your heads, don't peek. Mother knows the bogey fox.